Good morning, welcome back to the channel. It's uh, Sunday morning, uh, we're nearly out of lockdown. We can go and meet up and sit on park benches with odd people nowadays, I think. And this morning, I'm going to take Ozzy up the hill to uh, the woods and see what sort of shots I can get. But I've got to say, I've got something different today because over the last week, I've had a bit of a revelation. About a week or 10 days ago, I bought a new Tamron 28 to 200 lens for my Sony and I bought it sort of half speculatively to think see how good it was because I heard some good rumors about these new Tamron lenses the, the RXD lenses um, is the range I believe they're called or at least that's one of the acronyms that goes with it but I got this lens it cost about 700 699 from Amazon and I spent a couple of days playing with it, absolutely blown away by the image quality. It certainly was as close to, if not the same as, the quality I was getting from um, similar shots taken with my Sony uh, G Master lenses. So that got me on to thinking, um, well, I wonder if I've just got a special one or are they all as good as this? So what I did was I bought a 14 to 28, so I've got 14 to 28, 28 to 200, and I also got the 70 to 300 lens total investment, about 2,200 pounds. And I thought, well, I've got a 16 to 35, which overlaps my 24 to 70, and I've got a 100 to 400, and I've got a two times converter. So I went inside and run up Lightroom, and I set the smart filters up to actually work out where most of my photographs are taken in which sort of focal ranges and I found that below um, 16 mil I didn't really have many uh, because in the past I've had a few really ultra wide lenses but I've not really used them enough and equally much above sort of 250 mil I've not really had any uh, large numbers of images there either so I decided I'm going to sell all my Sony G Master lenses and the two times converter and switch across to just using these little Tamron lenses. And I must say, I'm really pleased. And the reason I'm really pleased is one, they're cheaper. I've been able to sell all my G Master lenses for at least 50% more than each of the replacement Tamron lens cost me new. And my lenses range in age from about four years through to about 18 months. But not only that, they're made out of a, a very high grade polycarbonate, which means they're incredibly light. And as a result, they're also smaller as well. And they're 2.8 lenses, at least the, the wider ones are both 2.8s, but the 28 to 200 goes 2.8 to about 4.8, something like that, or 5.6. But as a landscape photographer, we rarely, rarely, rarely take pictures um, wide open. Um, I can live without 2.8 on the longer lenses, quite frankly. I don't do sports, I don't do uh, animals, things like that very often, so I can live without it. So I'm going out today with my new backpack, which I'll show you in a moment. Well, it's not a new backpack, it's one I've had for a long time, but I've pressed it into service because this tiny little backpack can actually get the body in with one lens on and the two other lenses and all my bits and pieces. And also, I've decided to get rid of the big Surui tripod. Um, partly because these lenses are now lighter and I don't need as solid a tripod as I did before because even the 70-300 um, to 300 lens is incredibly light. It's lighter than the other two and again the image quality is great. So come with me, join with me up in the woods and let's see what sort of pictures I can get with these new lenses and let me show you the, uh, the new layout. I did a what's in my bag only a couple of weeks ago uh, and strangely what's in the bag has just changed again so let's go and have a look at what is in the bag today well there is the uh, beautiful surui tripod which is on ebay at the moment and i'm hoping that will sell to be replaced by or used more frequently this which is my uh, peak designs travel tripod in carbon fiber which i rant and rave on about because it's so light and compact and pretty much does the job that i need so as you can see, that's fastened to the edge of this um, low pro backpack. It's a sling style backpack, which means it doesn't have two straps. It only has one, as I can show you here. You can see this strap curves from the middle down to the lower left hand corner and you just drop it over your shoulder. I find that really quite convenient. It certainly works for me. So let's have a look 
in the backpack and see just how much stuff I've got in here. So here we have, this is the Tamron. Uh, is the light enough to be able to see that properly? Probably. That is the little uh, 17 to 28 2.8 RXD lens. And although it's made of plastic, I don't care. It's actually really nicely finished. It's high grade quality plastic. So there's that lens and then there is the this is the 28 200 lens um, which again from seeing how large it is in my hand it's actually significantly smaller than the um, 24 to 70 was and this covers a, a larger range. It, it has got a locking mechanism on so it does actually extend but then again both my 16 to 35 and my 24 to 70 extended and this is beautifully smooth it really is smooth I've not actually ever used a zoom lens where the uh, the in and out um, extension is as smooth as this so that is that was my first purchase and that is a lovely lovely little lens now if I spin you round down to the pack those both fit in the top part of this um, case separated by a couple of these microfiber cloths to keep them from banging into each other and then if I just spin this over now this has got a opening pouch at the bottom which is as you can see rather difficult to unzip single-handedly in here we've got in here we've got the main body and that is the uh, the 70 to 200 lens on there at the moment sorry 300 lens and it's fully retracted obviously but it's much much lighter that whole combination is much lighter than my 100 to 400 I know this isn't a 400 it's a 300 but that said it's still significantly lighter and it's more compact as well that whole arrangement isn't huge and it really complements the the Sony and that obviously just sits down there like so and it is a nice fit in that case it just fits nicely and that's the longer of the lenses and that fits in there so I can basically have any of these other two lenses and drop them in or on the camera body and put it here and then there's this convenient little area here where I've got some spare batteries and some cleaning cloths and bits and pieces so that's all I've got with me and that is what I'm going to take up as I say that is what I'm going to go up to the woods with with the dog in a few minutes and We'll go and see what we can get. So I'm covered 17 mil through to 300 mil in a package that doesn't weigh too much. So let's see what we can go and get. I'm not sure what I'm going to focus on. I don't know what's there today. So we'll see what there is. Well, here we are at the top of the hill. Um, it's a little bit, there's tiny breeze, nothing much at all. It's uh, quite nippy actually. And uh, it's a bit gray and overcast as a day around here. And it's lost me but I can spin you round and show you what we've got up here as you can see there's been quite a lot of clearance of trees and there's new growth everywhere but the older trees have been left behind some of them are dying and if you can see directly in front here there's one coming up which has got the bark coming off it because that tree is now well dead and in the distance down the little gully and up the other side is a really fine old oak tree is a rather a gnarly shape and what I'm trying to do here is I've got the uh, the 70 to 300 lens on here uh, which is not any strain for this uh, Peak Designs tripod at all there's absolutely no movement here that I can see of any merit because there's no real weight in that lens and I'm going to take a shot that looks a little bit like well it looks like that basically where we've got the right hand side of the frame been formed by this tree that's losing its bark and that's my focus point and I'm going to be at about f11 here because I want the tree that's in the distance to be a little bit uh, less in focus than the one that's actually the focus point which is this area so this whole area frames the picture and then we've got this other tree leading out of the frame to the right or sorry to the left here 
Uh, and I've got what f11 30th of a second I'm out at 300 mil right at the end of that range lenses range I'll take that shot two second timer the ubiquitous two second timer and yeah that's the first shot it's really quiet here there's a few mountain bicyclists uh, wandering around which is quite often the case up here uh, but no I don't know Quite a pleasing little bit of a framing. I appreciate you guys keep seeing me coming to the same places, but that's inevitable at the moment. I'm just trying to get some different content each time I come. So we'll have a wander through the woods and see what else we can find. Well, I've arrived at another uh, spot here with a very fine old tree and I'm just going to try and frame it. But before I do, I just wanted to discuss, I've just switched the lenses over, I'll spin you around, and I just put the 17 to 28mm lens on here, which I can slowly spin you around, 17 to 28 is there. And two things came to mind when I changed this. I had the 300, uh, 70 to 300 on, and I didn't need to take the camera off the tripod to do that because there's no tripod foot on that lens because it's so light it doesn't need one. Um, it's quite happily supported from the main camera body. Um, even at full extent it was more than stable. The other thing I wanted to point out is all three lenses have exactly the same filter thread. So the lens hoods are interchangeable. The filters are interchangeable. Um, that means that my, uh, spin you around again, the uh, K's magnetic filter system I've been waxing lyrical about for so long. I haven't got it with me today because it's not really the sort of day I need a polarizer or any sort of natural density filters. But um, what it did, um, what it means is that I only need one 67 to 82 mil step up ring which sounds like a big step up, but actually there's an advantage in that because when I stack the individual filters together on the front magnetically, the width that it becomes when it's actually stacked can cause vignetting on a very wide angle lens. And certainly my 16 to 35, if I put two or three of these magnetic filters on, showed heavy vignetting. Now, because these lenses are fundamentally that much smaller, then the actual area where the vignetting would happen is outside of where the lens is looking. So I've got the added advantage that one, I can reuse my original K's filters um, just for the sake of one symbol so adapter. Morning, morning. Hello, hello. That's a little friend turned up. Well, oh, sorry about that. Uh, the lady that I didn't really notice creeping up behind me along the track. Uh, we got chatting and Ozzy got playing with her little dog and she was just talking about the area. She lived here a long time. It's always nice just to catch up with people just like that. It gives you a reason being out to actually have a chat with people and uh, see, see what they're doing and how they're getting on in all this pandemic and the nonsense around it. Or at least not nonsense, but you know what I mean. It's just changed everyone's lives, turned them upside down, made us reevaluate an awful lot of things. In particular, in my case, it just valued the being out. Um, I love working from home. I, that really does work very well for me, but it's, it's almost like a dripping tap. You spend so much time more or less in the same place. It, it becomes, uh, it's almost a fear of outdoors now. I have to force myself to come out which is odd because I like it once I'm here, but it's almost agoraphobia, if that's the correct term. Anyway, I've, as I was saying, that um, all of these filters uh, do fit on this, or will do, once I've got the uh, adapter come through. And therefore, I only have to carry one adapter, one set of filters, three lenses with the same um, filter size makes life a lot easier. Uh, so I'm not regretting my decision to sell the, um, the G Master lenses because I've replaced them with something that's are more than adequate for my needs, lighter and cheaper. And that is a good thing from my perspective. And the other big uh, purchasing decision that I've just made is I've actually got on order an A1, Sony A1. And the reasons for that are, this is a 62 megapixel camera, but it's recentered itself and gone, it keeps changing. I think it's following the dog or something. Anyway, sorry about that. It's, um, I've ordered an A1 and my reasons behind doing that is not because I want to spend lots of money, I'd rather not. But 
the 62 megapixels this camera has got, or 61 point, whatever it happens to be, as opposed to the 50 that the A1's got, uh, might sound like a, a downgrade. But the sensor in the A1 is better um, from everything I've seen and read. There's far less noise, and on the few occasions that I get moaned at by the dog, as you can hear, or on the few occasions I want to take pictures of animals, dogs, pets, children and things, this um, A7R4 is just not fast enough. They've moved by the time it's focused on them or so on. I want a camera that's snappy, a proper pro professional camera. And that's my reason pretty much for getting that. I want the higher ISO performance so I can have higher shutter speeds. And I will definitely like the fact it's got the new touchscreen menu, which I find this menu system is fiddly. And that's one of the criticisms, but it doesn't justify spending 4,000 odd pounds more than this costs. But um, anyway, uh, I don't know when I'm going to get that, probably some point in April, and you'll be the first to hear about it when I get it. But that, plus these new lenses, will be my kit going forward uh, for the next few years, hopefully. And um, we all know that uh, strange crow noises. We, we all know that equipment's constantly changing, and I'm not changing it for nothing more than fun. I'm doing it because there's a perceived benefit. I don't mind the slight downgrade in resolution because I can always stitch images together to get higher resolution images anyway. And that's probably going to be the subject of one video in the near future. Why do we need such a wide range of lenses for landscape? Um, we can actually stitch images together to produce wide angle images from much narrower lenses. But um, I'll come on to that on a later video. So what I'm setting up here is this shot and I'll spin you around to show you the tree. This tree here in front of the camera, this magnificent beech or oak, someone can correct me as to what it is, really stands out as quite something. And I've put the 17 to 28 lens on because I want to really get quite close in and make that tree pretty much the prominent feature. And what am I at at the moment? I'm at 17 mil and I've got, which you can see possibly here, a lot of the tree I want all of the branches to be leading out into the corners to, and I need to frame something in the foreground which I haven't found yet. So just bear with me and I'll uh, get set up as I want the shot and then I'll talk you through it. Well okay, after a bit of fiddling around and carefully manoeuvring the tripod I've managed to find a bit of foreground interest that um, uh, nicely works with the tree. I'll spin you around and show you what it is that I mean by that. Okay, the tree is on quite a steep bank here uh, in front of us. This bank goes up, I'm stood, it's coming out at about chest height, the, the level ground there in front of the tree that the tree is coming out of. And obviously it's carrying on up into the sky with all this spindly wood in the distance behind it. And what I wanted to do is incorporate these roots as the foreground interest. And at 17 millimetre I can get quite close to them. So I'm probably about a metre from the lens, metre, maybe a metre and a quarter metre and a half to where the, the branches are or the roots are here. And what I'm getting on the back of the camera is the roots in the foreground. And because I've come down a bit in height, the, the boring piece of land between the roots and the tree, um, the sort of the level piece up here, is actually reduced, its impact on the image is reduced so that we end up with this sort of straight line across the image here. Uh, with the tree creeping up into the, the sky with all the branches going out in the corners as I'd actually wanted. And I've got this leading line, as it were, of this root here leading up in towards the tree, which I think works really very well. So I've gone, I'm focusing sort of here, just about a third of the way into the shot. And I'm at f16, so a lot of that image is in focus already. I've had to pull the uh, correction up to plus 2.7 um, because we've got a very bright back sky. So that's tending to sort of cause the highlights to be blown out, which is fine because there's no detail in the sky. So I'll take that shot first and then I'll take a second shot with the sky, which has got a few clouds but it's very bright. I'll take a second shot, then I'll merge those together in post-production to try and get a bit more detail in the sky. So that's the first shot. Now I'm going to wind the exposure compensation right down so that the sky is not blown out, which really looks very dark. 
and I'll focus on that on the branches against the sky and I can then pull those two yes as I say that's uh, it's going to be an interesting thing I'm not sure that will blend but I'll try to blend it um, and get a little bit of the detail in the sky behind the tree so that it's not just all blown out I'm not sure I'll be able to uh, but we'll give it a go and see what happens so uh, that's uh, today's little bit of video up here back to the car now and go home post process those images hope the internet's working because it's been running very slowly today and uh, yeah that's it a little intro to the new gear that I've got I'm traveling light and I'm enjoying the photography more because of it actually much as I love that big Sarui tripod it really was a pain to carry around it was quite a heavy beast and it made me think twice about taking a tripod which in many ways isn't a good thing because it means there are shots you're not going to get easily without one Yes, you can improvise with bits of wood and things, but it's not quite the same thing. Anyway, back to home now and um, get those processed and let's see what we get out of it. And you'll see them in a few minutes. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and click the notification icon and the bell and you'll be able to be notified when I upload new videos. 